another one of my fake Spyderco series here. These are going to be some dragonflies. Um, I did a uh, video where I showed some salt fakes versus some real salts. These are real salts. I don't have any other real dragonflies at the time, so these are my genuine dragonflies. And these are some fake Chinese uh, dragonflies that I have to look at for just a short period of time. So uh, that's, why I, that's why I'm comparing them to these salts. I don't really have any other dragonflies that are normal type dragonflies to compare them to. But the salt's close enough. Uh, that it's got the same FRN on it. Um, and these have the real bi-directional FRN. So they're just like a, a current dragonfly. The only difference is the met metal that the blade's made out of and the fact that it's not a full flat grind on the blade. Other than that, these are real dragonflies, you know, just as if they were any other dragonflies. Now these dragonflies, these fake Chinese ones, have got G10 and they're full stainless linered and everything. So this is kind of a different kind of dragonfly here. These are uh, dragonflies though that I just got uh, from China directly. So I'm going to pull off one of my uh, dragonflies off to the side, real ones, and sort of go over a comparison of these things real quick. Let me take this guy and just sort of put him in the back row here. These are G10. The G10 is kind of soft. It does not have much texture on it. It's very smooth. I mean, not super smooth, but it's got a surface texture, but it doesn't have the bite that you feel on Spydercos. Um, it's full flat grind. It's certainly a ton heavier than this one because you've got the G10. G10 is not super light by itself. Then you've got full stainless liners, and then you've got this full back lock on here as opposed to you know, a uh, spider code dragonfly where you don't have any liners. You have no liners inside. You just have the FRN outside and then you just have the back lock piece. And I think you can see that even the back lock piece on here is wider. Yeah, that metal piece is much wider than the uh, dragon, real dragonfly. And the, uh, the blade is thicker too, appears to be. Now this dragonfly's got a little swedge on the top, but you know if you feel the blades, there's a little more substantial blade there. Um, a full flat grind, uh, since I don't have a full flat grind genuine dragonfly at this time, I don't know how, really how to compare that to this, but there's a little more blade there. So this is a substantially heavier blade. I didn't weigh them, but you know this is probably close to a couple ounces, two ounces or so. You can see the full liners. It's got the clip. Clip feels about the same gauge, and you know, so a lot of them have a little movement to them. Um, it's all um, screwed together. It's got screws on both sides. You can take it apart. Uh, it's got the got pretty good jimping, adequate jimping. Let's see. Not quite as good as it's a little slippier than the Spyderco jimping, but not a whole lot. I mean, it's, you can see it's a lot bigger. The pattern is, it's about half as much, half as many cuts as on a Spyderco. That may be part of it. It definitely doesn't feel, this really grabs you. Let's see if the jimping on the bottom, yeah, it's about half as many on the bottom too. The biggest thing about the knife, now you got to remember that these knives are only about 7 or $8. And I would say this is probably the reason why I'm showing this. I wasn't going to make one on these uh, um, little fake uh, dragonflies. These would be good gift knives for somebody other than the fact you're gifting them something that's got, you know, a counterfeit, um, you know, it's counterfeited. But... Uh, other than the fact that there's two problems with this, which is common to backlock um, Spydercos. Um, I did have some Enduras that I showed, which were pretty good knives and felt pretty good. But these things are really, uh, this is the best one of the bunch. They're very, the action on them is very rough. To probably make this into a really nice knife, you'd probably want to take it apart and smooth whatever rough edges are in this lock face, the tang face of the blade and the... Uh, the back lock face. There's something in there that's really rough and is is making this feel rough. Uh, you can see that the fit and finish on these things is not quite spider quality, quality. Like you can see this gap here. Let's see. 
There's a little gap on this one right here. Start getting these all together. Show them one at a time. You can see there's a space here. They're just not quite, they're not bad. For the price, they're absolutely fantastic. Uh, the other little problem they have, which is common for backlock clones, Chinese clones, is that you open them up and they get the lock to disengage. And this boy dent is cut way down. I think that's their problem is they cut this, they cut it twice as deep as they should. You know, the, the idea of this little boy dent here, David boy dent, is that if you're using the knife, you don't accidentally trigger the uh, back lock, which I think is really, I don't, I'm not sure I believe any of that. So I've never done that on any knife without this on there, but that's why they've got it on there. But the problem, now it works fine on a Spyderco. So here's a Spyderco. It's still cut pretty uh, deep. And it disengages easily, even with the, with the dent, with the boy dent cut in it, the lock disengages easily. The problem with the uh, fake Spydercos is that um, you got to push down on them and that's how, uh, it still hasn't disengaged. It's still caught right there. You got to push all, I mean it has to be bottomed out in there and then a little extra push. So there's just, uh, I think they shouldn't have cut this dent quite so far. There's something about they don't understand about this. Now one out of these three actually behaves relatively uh, good. That's this one in, in that concern. But it also feels like it's like when it first starts disengaging, it's really, it's, I think there's something wrong with it is why it's doing that because it's really kind of got a moving around there where it should be either in or out. It's kind of half in, half out. Doesn't feel right. Uh, as opposed to this guy, which disengages cleanly and locks up cleanly. There's not, none of this like, you know, I push a little bit and it's like almost disengaged. So the one that feels the best out of these, I think has really got a problem. You can see that huge, uh, those huge seams on the back. And you can't really squeeze it together, so I don't know if there's a warp to something that's not quite machined flat or what. But I, I would reiterate that these are pretty doggone nice knives for about seven bucks shipped from China. You just gotta wait a month to get them. I'll show you the blade here. Full flat ground. I mean, the guy who did this knew what he was doing. There's no sloppy uh, blade blade grinding. They're pretty sharp. They're not as sharp as a Spyderco, but they're sharp. Nothing sloppy about the knife other than it's got some quality control issues that are related to how much money they're putting into this knife. But uh, of all the knives out there, these are some of the best deals going if you want a nice pocket knife that you can live with the problems. Especially if you wanted to take it apart and possibly stone, take a little, you know, uh, a uh, sharpening stone or a piece of ceramic or something and clean up some of the rough edges on the inside of this knife and make it smooth and you might be able to even figure out what's going on with this back lock why it doesn't disengage cleanly uh, and clean up I mean when you open and close this thing it is rough now it would get smoother but uh, and you obviously don't have any idea what kind of steel this is but um, you know I bet it's probably a decent grade of stainless for the most part who knows um, I don't see any obvious rust or anything on it out of the box, which I have seen with my fake salt clones that I did a video on. I, these the fates, fake salts had rust on them and nasty marks out of the box. So uh, uh, I would say this is uh, quite a deal on a knife. And like I said, these are about like seven ninety five or something shipped from China directly from AliExpress. So uh, you get a VG ten knife, all stainless probably stainless, uh, probably, you know, 440 something, or maybe, um, probably 440 something or eight CR 13 MOV, some kind of steel along those lines. Um, very nice knives for what you got, what you pay for them. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to post them. 
Um, I didn't cover much on the uh, Dragonfly. I mean, it's smooth. Everything about the, the real Spyderco Dragonflies is first class. Um, I, I'm not really here to review Spyderco knives. I'm here to look at clones, which is what I make these videos about. So I happen to have these in my possession for a short period of time, and I wanted to shoot a quick video on them. Um, feel free to ask any questions or make any comments, and I'll answer uh, anything you post. Thank you.